Welcome to SchoolNet's webinar, series of past finalists and winners in Microsoft's Partners in Learning Forum in South Africa. I'm Fiona Beal and I'm hosting this webinar. I would like to introduce you to Charlie Wiggle, who will now tell you about his project called Tweensight. Over to you, Charlie. Right. So Tweensight was three years ago, so I, I need to remember a little bit uh, as we go along but hopefully you people can hear me. And I decided to do this one rather than the two projects I've done subsequent to this um, at the ITF because I felt that um, people might learn more from my early stages in the process that I had to go through. So Tweensight was created for Tweens, a tween-friendly network for the 2010 Soccer World Cup. If I speak too quickly, please just tell me to slow down. Uh, tween, for those that don't know, youngsters between the ages of 9 and 12, no longer little children, but not yet teenagers or adolescents, and they obviously need all the help they can get because it's a very difficult stage of their lives. I'm not going to read through all of this, but just to show people who are looking to do projects that it needed to fit in with the uh, sort of rigors of education at the time. I was teaching four different subjects at grade seven level uh, after having taught matric English for a couple of years. So, and, th and that's why I decided to do this project as well. In fact, there were three reasons. The catalysts were, firstly, teaching four subjects and finding something that I could make really interesting where the kids would do a whole lot of work across those subjects and uh, have assessments across those subjects but sometimes the same work for maybe two different things as opposed to lots and lots of work and only one mark here and there. So the first thing was teaching four subjects. The second thing was the Soccer World Cup of course that was coming around and Durban was one of the host cities. And then the third was a project that you might have come across uh, with Fiona in the work you've done so far. It was at about a school I think in South America that did a whole project on litter in their school and using GPS plotting to work out where the main areas of litter were within the school. They're also approaching management and saying to management, these are the areas that we actually need to put the dustbins because they had linked it to, to Google Maps and worked out where the main litter areas were. And I was fascinated by that. I thought, wow, this is something that we could use. Right, so that's where it started. The, the critical qu questions asked initially were, do we consider the needs of tweens? Is there a generation gap in the services offered by businesses to tweens? Uh, to what extent do tweens influence decisions regarding the family spend of the budget? And then there were a few more. Do tweens themselves believe they are taken seriously as consumers and treated as equals by service providers? Could tweens become discerning users of technology? And how can tweens become positive ambassadors for South Africa 2010? The final one, of course, was, is Durban ready to host uh, World Cup services, etc., for tweens? So that's where it started from. Uh, obviously, at the time, we realized that tweens, uh, sorry, I'm not going to go back to that, but the tweens are online, tweens are tweeting, tweens are with it, uh, and we need to try and include them as much as possible. Um, I've got a number of tasks that I've put up here. You'll see this is task two. I haven't put all of them up, but I've put a number up just to show you some of the things that we did. We looked at cell phone technology and how it could be used in the classroom, but we did virtual mind mapping using Web2 tools so that uh, children could be at home and do this um, in, in their different homes and in the classroom, but from one computer to the other to show the instantaneous uh, use of Web2 tools. Uh, another thing that I introduced them to, in fact, I do this every year, is Gardner's theory of multiple intelligence. This is to show them that they are capable, be, be it musically or spatially, perceptually, etc., not just linguistically and mathematically, which is sort of the basic test that most people use. Once that confidence is up, obviously a whole lot of other things improve as well. The fifth task was surveying tweens internationally. They used a whole lot of different methods at their disposal. You can see a couple of examples on the board, uh, you know, in front of you on your screen. And what was fascinating was that when I was a kid, had I done a survey, I probably would have done three or four children or other people overnight and been very proud of it the next day. Uh, the one child within 24 hours surveyed 124 people. And I raised that here just to show you the power of social networking and that, and that the children are doing it. And we need to try and tap into that. It really is a valuable uh, source of information. Uh, in the sixth task, was to categorize different businesses into the various sectors. 
so they had to work out if people if, if people were coming from overseas and we were trying to encourage people to bring their children with them to the World Cup, not to leave them overseas, but to bring them to South Africa. We were saying what are the different sectors that they need to uh, need to consider. Obviously, this was an EMS thing, so we decided that we would look at all the different areas and they had to categorise it. They did all of this work themselves. Uh, task seven was to interview and rate businesses on their tween friendliness. I will show you an example now, now just a part of one of the surveys that they came up with. I hope that this is louder. Um, I, I realize people are still concerned and I'm not sure what I can do from this side. I hope I am speaking loudly enough. Yes? Right, here's an example. Task 8, a tween friendly survey. They had to come up with a survey. They had to work out exactly what was included and this is just part of it. But if you look towards the bottom of the survey where it has those five things, it says uh, the location where it is, and then it says, is it easy to find? Yes, no, indifferent. Safety and security. Is it child safe? Is it tween friendly? And then certain things. So there was more than this, but each child actually went, made appointments with companies, went out there and actually interviewed the companies with a clipboard um, as any professional would. Um, some of them were blown away, invited to coffee, which they didn't pay for, etc., and said they felt like real adults in the workplace. Remember that they were in grade 7, so 12, 13 year old, it was fantastic for them. Uh, they then recorded the contact details, including GPS coordinates for where those buildings and businesses were. Task 10, they photographed an e the establishment, and there was brief video footage of a no number of them, not all of them, but many of them. Uh, they then awarded Zulu Shields of Excellence, a maximum of six, like Hotel Stars. This was a fantastic exercise for them where they actually decided and graded exactly how that business would fare as a tween-friendly establishment. Here's just one example. Uh, this was a website that we eventually created, and there's a little bit more of that later on, but I'll be there shortly. So here was a restaurant, the Crave restaurant. Where it is, it's got the address. Very briefly about it, there's car guards, etc., etc., and it got five and a half Zulu shields of excellence. Um, quite a fun part for them. We collaborated with our twin school, Vukuzake High School in Umlazi. In fact, there were a number of other schools that, that we uh, dealt with as well in Torquay, in England, and elsewhere. Um, but uh, the children themselves did many surveys and discussions, etc., via Facebook, which you'll see just now and then also using Mix It and so on with friends, uh, expats and so on that they had contact, contact with throughout the world. But the main two schools we dealt with was Vukuzaki in Umlazi, which is down, just down the road from us, and Torquay Boys High School, Boys Grammar School in England. Um, task 13, they emailed Excel templates to Tweens Art Storage. That's where we kept all the stuff, all the data. And task 14 was to create a Facebook group and web blog in support of the whole thing to encourage tweens overseas to start logging into it, into the website, and to have a look at what was available in Durban as a tween-friendly city. Task 15, totally off uh, the, <laughs> the real electronic version, yeah, or things, yeah, but it was to visit Moses Mbida Stadium, which was brand new at the time, and to reward and motivate the pupils for all the work that they had done. Task 16 was to create an e-map of the locations of businesses and services so that it was available, people could see GPS coordinates, etc. One of the reasons for this was that Durban was undergoing many, many street name changes at the time. I think, in fact, there were 190 or so, and even Durbanites were getting lost. And the children themselves felt that they wouldn't be able to direct foreigners to the right place because they didn't actually know what the street names were, so GPS coordinates would be better, and so an electronic map would be created. Task 18, they emailed leaders and the media for support to offer um, support for the World Cup, but also to request support for their website and what they were busy doing. So they interacted with top politicians, a whole lot of top sportsmen, including um, Sean Pollock, uh, radio personalities, etc., and got responses back from those people, which to them was very exciting as well. Yeah, it's just a very brief example of the website. In fact, we're right near the end of the, the actual slides, and then I'll speak about one or two other things. So this was the opening page of the website with the logo that they created for tweens themselves. You notice that tweenagers rule. That was the class, the, the grade sevens themselves. And that's it as far as the slides go. Just to talk about one or two other things very quickly um, about it, it asked how long the project 
took? Well, it was actually over a three-month period, um, over four different subjects. Uh, had I sorted out the whole thing before, I, before we started the thing? Was it all set out before we even began? Not at all. I really learned to, along the way as new technology became available or I became aware of it and more knowledgeable and um, was introduced to some of it by the children, so it was added where possible. Um, one of the questions was how did you decide which technology or what technology to use? Um, if it was appropriate and worked, or if the children were already using it effectively and felt that they wished to use it further, so we then added it. But there were definitely some other things that were very gimmicky that weren't worth actually using, and you will need to filter out some of those things because some of them take a lot of time, and there's many, many different versions on offer, and it actually eventually wastes your time. So you need to do, screen that quite carefully before you... more complex than you've actually seen on screen here, but to cut it short, obviously I've just given you an overview. Uh, did, they, did the learners enjoy the project? How did they find it? Um, initially a little overwhelming, I think, but eventually they really got into their stride, realized that although they were only in grade seven, they could cover huge areas um, within the, the subjects, and it certainly brought the subject to life for them. Um, did we collaborate? Yeah, we didn't collaborate fully. Um, it wasn't building totally new material uh, around the world, but it certainly was building new stuff uh, in Durban with support from other people elsewhere. And then the last little question that Fiona posed for me, which I do want to mention very quickly, was about going to the SA finals. Um, it was absolutely phenomenal, and if there's any motivation for you to be invited to Johannesburg in the top 20, Really, it's way more than just the privilege of actually being invited there. It's meeting with 19 other like-minded individuals who are thinking way beyond the classroom, um, who are looking at stuff that you are blown away with yourself. Um, and the specialists that are brought in at that level are absolutely incredible, and it really just tweaks your approach to education and re-enthuses you. By the time you return to school, you're able to enthuse the, your star, fellow staff around you and the children, and of course they rave because they sort of feel that it was their project that made it there, and even though you are the only one that went up, you, they definitely feel that they were represented by you in that. That was Charlie Wiggle from Durban telling us about his project Tweensight. Thank you very much for sharing with us, Charlie. Good night, everyone.